Hi, everybody. Welcome to, can you believe it, 10 days until Rosh Hashanah. Wow, how is this a thing? Um, so because it's 10 days until Rosh Hashanah, I'm going to talk about the Hebrew letter that is affiliated with the month of Elul. And that letter is, can you tell them what it is, Dominic? Yud. Yud, that's right. We've got some uh, letter Yuds from Dominic's set of letters. And he's been learning the letters and he knows it's Yud. Yud. Yes, Yud. And what do we know yud. about Yud? Is it big? No, Small. it's not big. It's little. Okay. It's Does it little. stand for the number 10, perhaps? It is. It's the number. It's the 10th letter in the Hebrew alphabet. And it's 10 days until Rosh Hashanah. And it this is. is not a yud, it is a Yud. And it, it's the letter that uh, represents the month of Elul. And it's not a Yud? This is not a Yud. I think it is a Yud. Um, so it's paired with Elul. It means hand. So the letter, the word Yad uh, starts with the letter Yud, and it means hand. And it is the smallest of all the letters. But every single letter contains a Yud in it. It's like the atoms that make up all the things. Uh, in all the letters, um, like atoms make up all the things in the universe. But it's also the first letter of the divine name, the yud heh vav -He. So it represents the smallest thing that holds a lot. It is that single point out of which the universe was created. There is a story about... Hold <laughs> still. There is a story about um, how when the divine went to create the universe, no, they had to contract no, down to yes, a single point. No, yes, maybe do not do it. Yes, I'm going to hand you to Zadie. Yeah, yeah, come over here. <laughs> so, um, no. so the divine had to contract no. all the way down into a single point to make space. And so um, Elul is also known as the, uh, the month of making space. And that's because we empty ourselves out in order to be ready for Teshuvah. So we are creating space within ourselves in order to turn toward redemption, to turn toward um, what we need. So that Yud represents that one point. It's like, it's like the Big Bang. So everything contracted into one spot and then exploded out into everythingness. So it is, it is the number 10. But it's also the number one, so uh, because it's that one point. So you have the number one, and anything times ten makes it a manifestation, ultimate manifestation. So one times ten is ten. It's the ultimate manifestation of one. So it's this idea of oneness, uh, the oneness of divinity, and the oneness of creation, and the multiplicity of all things that are also one. So everything is made up of of, of the divine. <laughs> Everything's made up of the divine and it's still all one. So it's this paradox of the oneness and the allness of all things. So the letter Yud represents this month. And it's also um, like a little seed. It's like a it's like a seed that would grow things or or even looks like a little bit like a sperm that would then be a, a, able to create a new life. Um, so from a, a, an entire plant or an entire vineyard or an entire uh, orchard can come from one seed and an entire human being and a whole generation of human beings can spring from one, uh, one seed. And so it's this manifestation of potential and Elul embodies the seed and potential by being a preparation for Rosh Hashanah. So we have this letter Yud, which represents all those things. And it also is, um, I'm going to go to my, my little book that I've taken notes in about all my letters. Um, it, it, it harkens back to all these number tens that exist in Torah. So we have the 10 tests of Avraham. Um, there are 10 expressions of creation, the 10 steps you wrote which um, come down from above. There are ten, uh, 10 things that were created on the first day of creation at dusk, um, or the last day of creation at dusk. There are, uh, the 10 is the day of Yom Kippur, the 10th of Tishrei. There is a 10th that we tithe for giving to, you know, as Sadaka to people and to the, to, to the divine. 
there, yeah, the 10 Sephi wrote, we have the 10 plagues, the 10 plagues of power, um, the 10 commandments, of course. And, and the letter Yud is also affiliated with the astrological uh, constellation of Virgo. Each of the letters uh, rule over one of the celestial bodies in the sky. And Virgo is the one that is affiliated with Elul as well, because it is this um, idea of purity, this idea of emptying out so that we have um, space to turn to Teshuvah. And so it is also a hand, like I said, it, it's Yad, um, that, that pointer that we, we read the Torah scroll is the Yad, and it's, it, it is the representation of the manifestation of the letter Yud in, in our bodies, and it is action. So it's action in the world. And the reason why it's both emptiness and action during the month of Elul is because we have to do action in order to make Teshuvah. We have to make things right, things that we haven't done, but finished in the year, we have to finish them now. Uh, people that we need to make amends to. We have to do that now uh, at this time, right before Rosh Hashanah. So it's about action in the world. Um, let's see. It's about, so it's about power and authority and like the hand. And the, it says in my notes here that there are 1600 mentions of the Yud in the Torah, the Yad rather, the hand. Um, and there are 10 inscriptions of the void in the book, the Sefer Yitzirah. It says there are 10 inscriptions of the void, and it's a very mysterious book, and I highly recommend reading. It's relatively short, but it's really um, intense. Um, <laughs> we have a lot of discussion going on over here. Um, so that's our, our Kavana today. It's about this 10 days until Rosh Hashanah, the 10 fingers on our hands, and that one point that is the good, that is the seed of all, the seed of all creation, the one point into which the divine contracts in order for all of creation to exist. And action manifest in our world and in our life in order to get done what we need to get done before the new year, before Rosh Hashanah comes. Whoa, are you okay? Did you fall down? Uh-oh, we had a little crash. Um, yeah, the book I'm recommending, Susan, is the Sefer Yetzirah. It's an ancient book from like about the 5th century. Um, there are many translations of it. The translation that I really love and re read recently is by uh, Rav Kohenet Jillhammer, Rabbi Jillhammer. Uh, I'll write it in the chat for those of you who don't, aren't familiar with it. Um, we're ready to blow the shofar, though. Would you like oh. to come blow the shofar with us? Would you like to blow the shofar with us? I have a shofar for you. Here's your shofar. You want to come up here on Bubby's lap? Sit with Bubby, blow the shofar. Okay, we're going to blow the shofar. We don't have Diane, so we're just going to make the calls ourselves. We're going to do as many as we, we can. We're getting really <laughs> close, so we should be oh, we able to do many. Let's okay. do as many as we can. Okay. Okay. Take ya. Mm -hmm. Bye. Varim Trua Tikia Tikia Shavarim Tikia Yeah. 
ineffably transportive it's so amazing to have this i mean really bring us the days of awe you guys just embody yes. it thank you thank you very much take care everyone thank you yes you too